All right, go ahead and uh, knock out the picture at 216 578 1007. 1 800 348 1007. I got bad heartburn today, dude. Yeah. <sighs> Rough. Uh, 1-800-348-1007. That's 216-578-1007. 1-800-348-1007. Solving uh, your problems. That's why we're here. Expert advice from... Uh, I, I, I have no credentials other than a lifetime spent uh, in psychotherapy, not applying any of it towards my own life, any of it towards my own life whatsoever. Uh, but I'm a big fan of telling people how they should live. Well, it's absolutely. easier to fix somebody else than you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. When everything sucks and you have no one to turn to, you need help. You need real solutions to real problems from a real asshole. Maxwell is the fixer. Ah, uh, it's funny. Some things are just funny just for yeah, us. You yeah. ever that? <laughs> <laughs> if you could make that face again, that would uh, that would be. Uh, <laughs> I don't even you know. know Go ahead, knock that out again. When everything sucks and you have no one to turn to, you need help. You need real solutions to real problems from a real asshole. Maxwell is the fixer. Kind of like a. Uh, yeah, like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go ahead. Imagine this, a, a drug problem. I'll let you handle this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? You're on uh, the Maxwell Show. You've got the fixer. Go ahead. What's the problem? Hey, Maxwell. Yes. I've been for a really long time. Okay. Um, I'm just... Turning 18, couple weeks, and... All right, so you're 17 now, got it, 17, now you live at home with the folks, yes? <laughs> and I got a really bad OC problem. <laughs> right, okay, so hold on. Hold on, so so you so you live at home with uh, your uh, folks, yes? Yes. And you are insured on someone's health plan, yes? Yes. Okay, all right, go ahead. Um, I planned on... Going into some type of treatment when I turn 18. Fun, but uh, why would you? Uh, why would you wait? Why well, would you wait? What does your age have to? Why would you? Why are you waiting? Well, just because uh, my parents. I don't really. I think it'd be easier to uh, do at 18, just because of the different stuff that you could go through. Do they know? Uh, do your parents know? Your parents say, yeah. Some what? Yeah, but like all parents, they think they have an idea, yeah. but they really aren't really even scratching the surface of how bad. I was just wondering uh, the best like type of treatment I hear there's suboxone type methadone. Like, what did you? I was wondering what you went through. All right, dude. This is uh, look, look, man. This uh, wow. This is tough. This is a tough issue, dude. Uh, there's definitely different schools of thought on uh, treating your problem. Okay, there are different modes of treatment, models of treatment. Uh, one of them is a replacement therapy, like the one you're talking about, where essentially you trade one addiction for another and go on a maintenance-type opiate medication. That can work. I was on that type of uh, drug for a couple months, but I will tell you that I'm one of the few people that that's worked for because uh, a lot of times what ends up happening is you just trade one thing for another. Well, now, I'll tell you, at Glen Bay... Thank you. <laughs> they use it for three days just to get you over the hump, and then it's, you know, then you have to have to deal with <laughs> have to deal with the actual problem. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I thought it was important yeah. to clarify for that guy because you did use that yeah. stuff. That was the only reason that I actually even went to rehab was because I I uh, I learned about it on HBO and I was like, you know what? I think this might be the only chance I have of getting clean and sober because I couldn't kick the dope, dude. But you I pulled yourself off of it because of that reason. You yeah. didn't like quickly. the fact that you were, you were using something else. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. I came off that. of it quickly. It can work, but for other people, it it just prolongs the problem. I see. Yeah, so that probably wouldn't be the best idea, I'm thinking, for me. Now, here's what, look. You want me to fix the problem? Mm, yeah. com. <laughs> Seriously, dude, give him a call. 
Give him a call. It's that simple. GlennBay.com. Stop making excuses. I'll wait till I'm 18. That's the thing with the drug problem. Tomorrow. I'll wait till I'm 18, man. I'm knocking it out till I'm 18. Just one more, man. Know, Just dude. one more. I mean, that's the problem. I'm stopping smoking weed tomorrow for about 10 years now. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's never a good time to stop because you're a drug addict. And drugs are the most important thing in your life. That's okay. We're just naming it. It's what it is. You got a disease. Well, why is the most important thing in my no, life? No, it's not. Not when you're a drug addict. It's not. Not even your kids. It's that's drugs. Sad, that, well, that's a sad thing, man. Then, then, dude, you need to make a phone So there's call. never a good day to go, you know what? I'm ready to give it up today. You need to choose your lane in the road and decide whether or not you want to get better. But I can tell you, as someone that's been through it, you, dude, when you're caught up in it, you think it's impossible to have an enjoyable life without drugs, but it's totally possible. And I get that you're afraid of your parents, dude, and you mm -hmm. think it's going to be easier when you're 18, but let me just tell you, dude, they'd rather have they'd rather mm -hmm. have to go through the hard conversation with you now and have you alive on the other side of it than the other way around. Man, yeah, totally. I agree with that. Got it? Thanks, man. I really appreciate this. Now go crush up an 80 and rifle one down for me, kid. <laughs> that was awful. Uh, uh, I'm kidding. 216-578-1007. Uh, 1-800-227-5278. Uh, the website, maxwellshow.com. You can actually uh, submit these uh, ahead of time through, uh, through the uh, website. And then uh, also, don't forget, uh, tomorrow... Thursday. I'm so screwed up. I, I, I keep thinking this. that it's yeah, but I keep thinking that today's Tuesday. Yeah, no, it's I know. Wednesday. It is today. Wednesday. Tomorrow, legalize this six o'clock. <laughs> Turn you Pasquale to Massa. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> and uh, six o'clock. You can also submit those problems ahead of time uh, through the website at uh, maxwellshow.com. All right. So. Uh, and tonight, don't forget liquid tonight, ten o'clock. Uh, yeah, that's right. There you go. Well, I hate to do that, but I do not feel good. Been a rough way to go. The heartburn issue. Bad. I must have forgotten my uh, medication last night. Uh, I'm reading this. Someone uh, sent this through the website. Oh, an email for the fixer. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, and again, you can phone your problems in at the two one six five seven eight one double zero seven or one eight hundred three four eight one double zero seven. I didn't hear about this, but someone who sends their kids to school in uh, in Hudson, in my town, apparently they're all sketched out because they found a threatening note in a parking lot yesterday that reads, dude, listen to this. I didn't even hear about this. Okay. It's time for taking a stand and stopping the takeover. Today will be the day it ends. Before or after 10 a.m., Hudson will know. School is dangerous, bloody, hungry children. Boom. Bye. You got to watch those art teachers, man. They go out to the parking lot and smoke a little weed during the class, and that's not good. It says a uh, superintendent set out an automatic recorded message around 9 o'clock in the morning to each uh, student's home. Schools remain in session at this time with heightened security. Well, that's the one good thing about that town. They can afford to have, you know, yeah. the Navy SEALs at every exit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. So, wow. I didn't hear about that. That's scary stuff, dude. That is scary stuff. Is Let's true. go to Alex, line one. What's up? You're on the Maxwell Show with the Fixer. Go ahead. Uh, I, yes, Alex. Uh, I got one for you. Yes. I've been seeing this girl now for about three years. Three years. Got it. Um, I, last April, she got married to my best friend. Oh. And you're still banging her? Uh, about a month ago, she kind of cut it off. Right. Like, about a month ago, she cut it off. I'm trying to get back. I don't uh, know what I should do. Well, I mean, what's, uh, what's your issue? I'm basically, like... You're obsessed with her? Yeah. And she's still married to the other guy? Yeah. All right, I just want to make sure we have the background in there. I mean, uh, well, much more important. Obviously, her wahina is more important than your friendship, right? Well, see, I just started being friends with this guy for about maybe two years ago. I, I've known her like my whole life, and he obviously doesn't know. He has no clue. All just, right, here's the deal. Here's the deal, man. You're probably having crazy thoughts, like you know what? If she doesn't say, you know, I'm gonna bring it up to her and tell her that I want to be with her, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna tell him. Don't do that, dude. Don't be a d. Don't be a D. Don't be a D because your friendship with this guy doesn't matter. 
So speak your peace with her. If she wants to be with you, make her make up her mind. If she doesn't, get the hell out. What are you doing? No wine is that good. I know it feels like it is when you're caught up in it. I get it. It's not, dude. You get a little bit of, uh, dude, hindsight with the Wahina is 2020. Treat it like a car lease, man. Two years and done. Yeah. Go get yourself a new one. Really? Absolutely. You get a little bit of distance from this, you'll be like, what the hell was I thinking? But don't have any crazy thoughts like, if she doesn't want to be with me, then I'm going to rat her out to her husband. Because that's a D move. Been there, man. It's a bad call. Yeah. So no, no telling my buddy at all. Nope. I would. Well, dude, you don't care about him anyway. You're banging his wife. Quit trying to make it sound like you care about him. You don't care about him. You'd rather screw his wife. Come uh, on, man. See. It's I mean, it's friend. brutal honesty he's giving you, but it is, yeah. it's very truthful, man. I mean, that's I mean you really don't care about this guy, because if you did, you wouldn't be uh, banging his wife, right? Well, it's, 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 with her, it's been going on before. The it doesn't day. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you truly cared about your friendship with this guy, you would tell him out of your friendship with this guy. The only reason that you even think about telling him is because you want to be with her. Yeah. And well, well that's the wrong call, dude. If she wants to be with you, tell her that you want to be with her and let her make up her mind. And if she doesn't want out, she wants to stay with this guy, then you need to just cut and run. What are you doing? Not only that, and I think Max was leaving this part out. So, and uh, but, dude, let's say they split up and you and her get together. When you're not with her, you're gonna think she's banging somebody else, like she was banging yeah. you while she was married to that guy. So, so this relationship from the beginning is doomed yep, for failure, that's man. True. It really is. It, dude, you were do. I'm telling you, I get it. I have been obsessed over a woman before. I, dude, I understand, but it's doomed for failure. There's no fixing. Does she wear sexy panties? No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Dude, <laughs> okay, it's strike three. Like this that. bitch sucks. Like she wears no <laughs> panties, or what? She wears no panties, or what, what's the... She got, like, regular panties. Like, not, like, she doesn't wear, like, thongs all the time, but... Nice, sexy panties? No, they're not bad. All right, thank you. Goodbye. You're annoying me, dude. I know. <laughs> what should I do? What do you mean, what should you do? Yeah. Tell her you want to be with her. If she wants to be with you, then be with her. But if not, leave everyone alone. I think it's still the wrong call. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Lizzie. What's up? You're on the Maxwell Show. Go ahead. I want the fixer. What's your problem? Hello. And go. Her phone's the problem. Yeah, stand by. Uh, all right, let's go to Jacob. What's up? You're on the Maxwell Show. Go ahead. I have a girlfriend, and she won't even call me back. And I met her in May at a camp. Uh, how old are you? Are you a young kid? Yeah. How old? 13. Or, I mean, 14. Oh. All right, 14. You met her at camp, huh? Yeah. Did you guys uh, exchange, uh, obviously exchange a uh, a phone number or two? Did you kiss her or anything? Make out? little? No. I didn't make out. I only gave her my phone number. And she gave you her phone number? Yes. And you've called her and she's not calling you back? No. It's a life lesson, dude. She doesn't like you. They never do, dude. Especially when you're a young guy, young kid. You always pine for the ones that never want you back, dude. Oh, dude, I went through it. Especially so at camp. Bad. Especially at camp. Dude, when I was little, I would go, when I was about that age, I went through this with this girl named Maureen. Who uh, lived, uh, not that far. And dude, it was brutal. You Every wanted day, her so I, bad, and she just didn't love you, did all she? All I wanted to do was play in traffic because this girl had no idea I was alive, and it crushed yeah. me daily. Yeah. Dude, I spent my entire school life. Jacob, listen to me, man. From the time I was in first grade till honestly halfway through high school, in love with the same girl. With the same girl, okay? Okay. I would write this girl love letters and mail them to her house. I never heard anything back from her. It's just the way it is, dude. Move on. Move on. Yeah, it's it sucks, man. But they settle for an ugly broad. They're easier, man. Yeah, oh, it's rough. The first ten yeah. suck. I mean, especially really when you're a young little boy, and you're like, well, maybe she's not getting the call. Maybe no. that's what it is. Or Just, a grown man, and you think that too. Like seriously, I was like 13, and I was like thinking about jumping off of buildings. That girl made me so yeah. sad. I I never wanted anything in my life that bad. Never got it. Let's go to uh, Chris. What's up? You're on the Maxwell Show. Go ahead. Hi, this is uh, this is Chris. Yes. You know, I'm I'm 
just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit. My uh, my wife and I have been together since we were uh, 21, and right. uh, now we're 52. Right. And, oh. uh, you know, I just uh, don't have any sexual feelings for her anymore. I don't want to. I don't want to be with her sexually. Hello. Uh, I'm soaking it all in. Soaking it all yeah, in. He's thinking. All right. 21. You were right. I'm sorry, sir. You got together at 21. Yeah, we met each other when we were 20. And you have exclusively slept with her. You know, I'll tell you what. Since I was 21, I've never been with another woman. All right, all right. First off, man, you know, let me let me share this with you. We, I think, you know, especially as men, at least, you know, myself, I was always fed this lie, okay? The lie is that eventually, if you have sex with enough women... You just magically one day, you get it out of your system. It's the get it out of your system lie that yeah. I was sold. The, you know what, if you sow some wild oats, one day you're going to wake up and you're not going to want to bang every woman that you see. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work that way. My experience... It does not work no, it, no, No, it doesn't work that way. And my experience has been is that, dude, you choose a lane in the road and you make a decision. You make a decision, and you accept the fact that part of that decision... I made a decision to be faithful to my wife. Part right, of that decision right. involves the fact that I, I see women all the time that I want to bang. It's maddening. It's maddening. I go to the grocery store, I think about their panties. <laughs> I took my girlfriend over there for dinner. You know what I'm seeing, <laughs> dude? Like, I lose my mind. I have sexual thoughts about... Everyone. 80% of the women I come in contact with. Imagine, my sure. mind automatically goes there. I think about banging them about what they would look like half naked you know what i'm saying right. all right, right, right. So, now i also have some experience in being married and i will tell you that i obviously have not been married as long as you have i've been with uh, the woman i've been with for six years we've been married for three actually today's our anniversary and i think uh, thank you i think just as men because dude we're so over sex we're so bombarded with these images yeah. of what women are supposed to look like and dude i think that's what they're supposed to yeah. look like <laughs> well, i mean let's be honest and i think what happens is is that at the end of the day we just kind of get bored banging the same woman yeah and no one, you know what? Wait a minute. And, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. And I think it's normal, and I think guys don't want to talk about it because they feel like, wow, that's a terrible thing. It's a little bit of a cop out, too. I'm though. a bad guy. What's wrong with me? I should want to bang her all the time. It's like we right. just get kind of bored sleeping with the same woman because we want to bang other women. You don't think that's true of that uh, uh, of them w with us too? I think that that I, might be. There is some truth that to that, might but be. I think it's also I think yeah. if, if you use that totally yeah. as your argument, I think it's yeah. a little bit of a cop out. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, well, I, well, I think, me, dude, don't get me wrong. Thing. There's, there's nothing new. I mean, you know, I know what's going to happen. I mean, it's always fun. I mean, it's always been fun, and it's not, you know, you know, overly conservative. But nothing's new going on. Well, have, have you asked her? Maybe. If, I mean, there's. Here's what I found out about men that have this problem at home, honestly, is that a lot of times their wives have this problem at home, too, mm -hmm. and the guy doesn't know. And I, is this an issue that you don't want to talk to her about it, and or that you're nervous that she's going to think that certain things you want make you weird? Well, it's not I don't want a lot of weird things, but, yeah, there's maybe a couple things, but they're not, you know, I think really, you know, truthfully, I need. I. I want to really be with another woman. Okay, I. I, I, I get <laughs> that. You know but what? I, I'm, I struggle with that, obviously. Yeah. And, and you know, and I've got kids, and you know, I right. always. Hold on. How heart. old are your kids? You cheat on your wife, you cheat on your kids, man. How old are your kids? That's true. Uh, Twenty-two. Um. Well, uh, Seventeen and okay. nineteen. Okay. Yeah. You got to make up your mind, man. Yeah. And you know what? This is one of those decisions, honestly, where it's like, you know, you got to, I think you got to make up your mind every day. Because you know what? First off, I think you're right. You're allowed to change your mind. And you know what? There are women listening right now that'll say it's so shallow, so shallow that you would want to leave your wife just to have sex with like a different woman. But dude, I get it. You are going to regret it when you do it, though. I just want to, I just want to go do it. I mean, I love her, man. Well, I'm you think she'd give you a molly? No way. What's that? You think she'd give you a mully? Uh, you think yeah, if you approached no, her and said, how about a little strange tang, she'd... Uh... No. See, Is I she into women? Because she was old school. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, she comes. So then here's what you need to do, dude. Honestly, I'm going to fix your problem. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You love your wife, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You love your kids. Absolutely. You love everything about your wife except for the fact that you're tired of banging your wife, right? <laughs> That's right. Pornography. It's the only way. Just wail. Just wail every now and then. Dude, one decent night of diamonds and some red tube when you get home yeah. and this problem goes away. Just wail. Just wail, man. Just wail. <laughs> Seriously, just wail and accept it. I'm going you know to right now. At the, end of the day, if, at the end of the day, if you're anything like me, the moment you wail, the moment it's done, you're like, thank God I'm not at some idiot's house trying to find a way to get out of this woman's house so I can go back home to my family. Well, you know, I appreciate that. I never thought of that. Just get some porno and have your slutty whores in your uh, porno. Yeah, you know what? I mean, maybe, I, you know, if she would watch it with me, maybe that. Ah, don't even do that. That'll ruin it. Keep it, keep it sorted and secret. It can be your little, your little thing. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Take care. Take care, man. Dude, we don't talk about that enough. It's rough. It's like, dude, I love, dude, I love my wife too. But I gotta tell you, I want to bang whores. That was the greatest thing, honestly. <laughs> and, and I know you to be a pretty smart guy, but honestly, since you have moved here, that's the biggest there, piece of knowledge. That is the best thing that I have picked. <laughs> no, honestly, it really is. That was the best thing I ever picked up from you. Is that no matter what you do, and trust me, my last three years being single. Can trust me. <laughs> if I didn't get enough to figure it to be like th th yeah. enough was enough, there is no getting enough. Yeah. You never get enough. It, it's not, it, it, There's something to be said for getting some of it out of your system. You have to. But this lie that we're fed of, you know, you can have sex with enough strange women to where you get to a point where you only want one and that's it is the biggest lie ever. No, it, 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 it's, it's always going to be hard to make that decision. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. Judy's on the line. Courtney as well. Also, Adam. All right, if you have a question for the fixer, it's a 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. by comedy. Here's Tim Young talking about how hairy his dad was. A hairy dad? Does anyone have one of those? Uh, Chia dad, that's what I have. <laughs> we go to the pool or the beach, he'd take his clothes off. Our summer family pictures look like evolutionary charts. <laughs> Hey guys, I'd like you to meet my dad, Homo Erectus. Drive by comedy from the Maxwell Show on 100.7 WMMS.